What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about how to structure files in large React applications. And in fact, this technique or this file structure that I'm going to show you today can be applied to any front-end application. So it could be a Vue app, an Angular app, a Svelte app. It's not specific to React, but React is what I use, so that's what we're going to talk about. So what's the problem? Well, I've got a, an application I work on for work, and in the components folder, there are actually over 60 components, and it's really difficult to find a component you're looking for. And for a new dev, it's difficult to know where to put a newly created component and where to find all the components related to a file. So um, basically, find findability, discoverability, um, finding new components in a large code base and a large project is difficult if you put everything in one folder. So um, there are a few different techniques for this. Um, there's the atomic design, um, atomic folder structure. There's the React kind of components and container folder structure. And I'm going to go through all of them and then come up with a solution that I think will be best. I haven't actually tried this solution before, but we'll see how it goes. So let's make up an app. I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about work, of course. So I'm going to make an app up and we'll try and um, figure out how we'll make structure the file for this new React app. So it's a shop. Um, there obviously is a search bar here. This will be the checkout button. Um, this orange is like a toaster. So if there's an announcement, there's a sale going on, um, it'll go inside this toaster. And these are the pictures of the items with arrows here, a button to buy, a description, a price, and a footer. Um, if you click on an item and you want to check out, this is what the page will look like. We'll have a list of items and a pay button, of course. So as you can see, the header and the footer is shared between both pages. So if we were to split this up into multiple components, um, it might look a bit like this. Excuse the bad handwriting, but um, there'll be a search component here, a checkout, maybe a header component, a footer component, of course, maybe a grid if you're into that sort of thing, um, a toaster, a carousel, of course. Um, yeah, an input. Similarly, on the next page, there'll be product list and then a product checkout element. So let's try and think of what that would look like if you were to put that in a project, how will the files look? Um, so if we go to here, this is typically the structure of a new Create React app project. You get the public um, file, sorry, folder, package.json, index.tsx, and um, the source file. And the source file, this is where I put all the components, or this is kind of example number one all the components in the app in one component folder. Um, I've showed an example of what one folder will typically contain. So we've got the button TSX or JSX if you're not using TypeScript. This is where the actual component will go, the tests for the button and the styles for the button. So each one of these folders will have something like this in it. And actually, let, let me zoom in on this. I'm sure you can see it, but just in case. Um, each one of these components will have these three files in them. So this is this is okay. I mean, if you've got uh, a small app like like the one I showed you, this is perfectly fine. You can find all the components you want inside it. Um, and this is in line with the typical React file structure. So as you can see, they've got um, the the components and then more inside them. So you've got the main component folder and the component inside that folder, and you've got components and API. We don't have an API, so all the components go in here. So this, this makes a lot of sense. Um, if we were to, to make it more discoverable, we could go that down the atomic design route, which contains atoms, molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. So let's apply that to this structure. And that looks like this. So you've got atoms, the, the single use components, um, the kind of lowest of the low, they'll all be here. So these are all atoms, the, the drop down, toaster, header footer, of course. Um, in some cases, the headers could be uh, organisms or molecules because they'll have text and all that in them. But um, in this case, they're, they're just atoms. Uh, molecules, the carousel, because it contains multiple um, it contains multiple atoms, I think. I think I did this wrong. But anyway, you get the point. Search drop down contains a button, uh, the input as well. So it's got multiple components inside this search drop down. Uh, assembly an organism, product card contains the carousel. Um, this also connects a carousel and some text and a button. So that makes sense. 
we've got a template. So I didn't talk much about the template in the last structure, actually. So the template does exist here. It's a store layout. And this will contain the header and the footer. So that, that's here. Um, and these are the pages. So they're actually, this is a mistake. This shouldn't exist. And neither should this one. So let me edit that on the fly. Here we go. So there are actually two pages that use the same layout, sorry, in the same template. Um, and this makes a lot of sense. It's a bit easier to find files. Um, so you know that the atoms will be here. So the smallest components, like the kind of general use over and over again components, the molecules that might be specific to certain pages or not are here and the organisms and templates going here. But um, it's difficult to kind of know what what is a molecule and what is an organism and, and where to put them. Um, I spelt this wrong actually, organism without the S. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, it's difficult to know where to put them. And sometimes you might have created an atom that will eventually become a molecule or become an, an organism and you don't know where, you might be lazy and you might not want to reorganize it. And you could still have the problem of having 60 atoms inside your code base and not know where to put them. So although this design structure is useful, especially for small apps, this is perfect. Um, once you get a bigger app, if you've got like 60, 70, 80 components, putting them in atomic structure, atomic file structure could get difficult to find things. Um, so I've kind of had a look around online and I've merged two approaches together. I like the look of what Red.js has done. So they've got three structures. They've got a component, page, and layout, which makes sense. I mean, out, out of this, they've got basically the atoms, templates, and pages. They've put them in three places. Makes a lot of sense. And I've also read this blog post by uh, Janos Pasta, I think that's how you pronounce it, where he spoke about how to um, structure, structure your uh, uh, program based on intent, not architecture. So instead of doing just like MVC and putting all your controllers in there and putting all your models in there, why don't you try and find what elements the component, sorry, the app has and structure the folder, folders in that sort of way. So you've got wall has its own controller modeling view, conversion has its own controller modeling view and so on. And I've merged these together to come up with an approach that I think will work for large scale React applications or any front end application. And so this is it. Um, it's a bit long and there are a lot of folders, but I'm gonna go through what it is, what this is basically and why it's done this way. So I've taken the component layout page structure from Redwood.js and the components in my view are general components that are used in the app. So it's not specific to any page, these are general components that are used everywhere. Um, layouts of course is um, where the layouts go. So in this case, this is where the store layout will go. But you'll notice that layout has its own components folder. And this component is specific to this layout. So if we were to have, I don't know, uh, a login page, login page wouldn't wouldn't need search up down. It might have a header and footer. It wouldn't need this. So it will need its own layout. So like a, a login layout, and then it will have its own set of components if, if it needs. But as you can see, this makes a lot of sense. So if we were to wipe out this layout, we'd know, okay, this component is only related to the store layout um, page. So we can wipe out the whole thing. Similarly, the pages, the um, product page, as you can see, I have named it store product page. And this is something that I do. It's not something, that's some, not something that everyone else has to do, but it's basically a way to know what layout the page is using. So if we were to have login page, it will be, I don't know, login layout and then login main page, something like that. I don't know. So we've got store product page and these components are only for this page. So similar to the layout, if we were to wipe this page out, we know the components that um, that are needed in this page. And you don't have to just put components in there. It can be models, it can be um, requests you made to the API, these can be separate folders that are inside this, this main page folder. Um, and yeah, similarly, the checkout page has got its own component, which is just the product checkout cards component. So, Although this might not eliminate the issue of having like a million components in here, you can see that it's easy to find what you're looking for. And if this gets really big, then it means there's an issue because you you shouldn't have loads and loads of um, general components. 
if that, if that makes sense. You should try and limit the amount of components you have. And um, you shouldn't also have loads of folders. So if you're going like more than five levels deep, you should stop and not have too many folders. I hope that makes sense. Actually, let me rephrase what I said before. It's okay to have a lot of components, but if you end up having hundreds and thousands, then it's a case of thinking, okay, how should I break these components down into their pages or, or layouts? Because they must relate to something. They don't relate to, to nothing. And um, yeah, then it will make it easier for you to find certain things. So like I said at the beginning, I haven't actually applied this file structure to the project at work yet. I'm going to propose it and we'll see how it goes. And um, if it does go well, then I'll let you know. But please feel free to call me out. Let me know if you think this won't work. Let me know if you think it's wrong. And if you have any better suggestions, then feel free to put them in a comment in this video. Ping me on Twitter, um, DM me. And yeah, hope this is helpful. If it was, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.